As I finish up my series on the various HF digital apps that are out in the marketplace today that are keyboard to keyboard, I finally had to come to admit that JSA Call is the best that's out there. The more I studied and learned how to use it, I realized the hits against it, such as the time sync critical issues and what do you do if your clocks aren't matching, the grid goes down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they have built-in tools that will compensate for that. And in today's video, I'm going to break that down and show you so that you can get that minus 23 dB and a clean code, even if your clocks don't match. So if you're interested in learning JSA call from A to Z, then let's get started. Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm continuing the series on Ham Radio for Prepping. This is episode number 14, part 12 of the digital HF modes. I'll be doing a deep dive into JSA call from A to Z. It's going to be a little bit longer, but I'll be showing you uh, some features that you're not seeing out there on any of the videos. Uh, trust me on that one. I didn't know they were even available. Uh, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons to help others find this channel a little bit easier than you did. And I thank you for all the great comments you have been giving me. It keeps me uh, charged up to do these videos. So today I'm going to go over what is JSA call, the setup, get into time sync, time drift, time delta, talk about relaying and the six different ways to uh, use messaging within JSA call. I'll get into specifically some great prepper settings that you're going to want to use. And part two will be the actual demo. So GSA call, what is it? To make it simple, it's basically what you're doing is you're taking uh, the FT8, which is a weak signal mode by uh, K1JT, and combining it with uh, FSQ call and giving it the ability to be able to do keyboard to keyboard, but with very uh, weak signals, as, as well as some rich, rich features built into it. This is an outstanding app. You're really going to like this one. So JSA Call, to simply download it, is go to their website. Link is in the description below. So when we talk about JSA Call, that's the app, and JSA is the mode. And it works on a lot of platforms that are out there today. Quickly, let's do a general overview when you first open up JSA Call. Now, you're not going to get all of this information, but I put it there because if you're on for a while, this is what's going to happen. Uh, essentially, what you're looking at here is the incoming message area. Uh, and this is simply all you have to do is just double click to move a selected uh, message over. And this you're going to get common heartbeats, CQs. And uh, if you're having a direct uh, QSO, that information will show up over on the left side. By double clicking it, it's going to pull it into the, your selected message area. This is where you're having the one on one QSO or, or a group QSO could be taking place. Uh, where do you type? Right there. As far as on the left side, this is known as your herd list or your call activity list. This is probably the area you're going to spend most of your time paying attention to. Uh, you can do group chat, uh, simply like all call is everybody group chat. Uh, or you can do companies, excuse me, um, organizations such as Racy's, they have them, Aries, uh, Amron, Preppernet, and you can have your own, you can have your own net meeting, you can create it. But this is where you would click it on, and then at that point going forward, you donate have to ever enter in call signs. So this group chat versus individual QSOs uh, broken down. So if we look at uh, the left-hand side, if I want to adjust my mic settings, which is my receiving side, I want to keep this between 50 and 60. And I find that usually if I push it towards 60, I get better decodes uh, when I get a weaker signal. Over on the right-hand side is where you can adjust your ALC. This is for your transmission side. Simply, all you have to do is turn on the tune button, for example, up here. Uh, look at your ALC on your rig and adjust it till you see like maybe one to two bars just going past the, the zero line. If you look over here, it's basically telling you, who are you talking to? It's directed to, you know, N4MRD. If I want to change who I'm talking to, just double-click on another call sign. It pulls it over and it changes who your directed call to is. Pretty simple. Now let's do a little bit of deeper dive in here. I want to go over the SNR offset and time delta. Now the offset is basically telling me where is it down here in the waterfall. These look all like heartbeats if you're asking me because it's usually around like 800 is a heartbeat. And that looks like a heartbeat coming in over here. Um, so that's what your offset is. The SNR and time delta have a direct correlation. The SNR is your signal to noise ratio. So you can look here as a minus 13 
uh, which is not too good uh, in most cases, except for GSA Call. You can work that one very, very well. Other apps that may be borderline of an issue, that is not an issue whatsoever, provided that the time delta is low. Look at this, two minutes, uh, excuse me, 2.1 seconds is you're looking at. You, you probably won't even get a decode if you even get a partial one, especially at minus 13. Uh, here's a great time delta, plus eight. Uh, this is turbo speed right in here when you're using this. Uh, if you're looking for an example of, uh, 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 let's say 300 at a minus 18, I can probably do fast speed at minus 18 in JSA call with a 300 millisecond time delta. So what's, what am I trying to tell you here? If you get your time delta down below 500, it allows you to take some of these uh, signal to noise ratios that are not optimal, like a minus 18, and still use either normal or fast speeds. It's incredible. So uh, when we look up here, I'm at normal. And so I'm looking over here. Most everyone is using normal. But if my speed was different, it'd be showing over here. So we talk about time delta, what is it? It's the time difference between your computer clock, which you're seeing up in here, that's my computer clock. And it can be, for example, based off of uh, uh, Windows settings. It can, mine's, mine's actually based off of net time. But some people have it from GPS or other things. When you have, we're all using different time, uh, excuse me, time controls within our PCs, it's going to cause time deltas. And that's why we have to adjust them or in, outright resync the signal and uh, recalibrate the whole system. Uh, a band filters are great when you are just trying to have a private QSO and you don't want all of this. Sometimes it can be annoying, all this information popping up, Q, you know, someone doing CQs, a heartbeat requests, et cetera, et cetera. When you put a band filter on, it eliminates all that. The downside is it eliminates all that. So if you're the type of person that wants to talk to anybody and everybody, do not use a band filter. Or if you use a band filter and you want to go back to that, make sure you uncheck this. But I like this is when we're doing with our group is to basically uh, put a band filter on and be able to, even on a main channel that's such as 7.078, the frequency here with an offset of 1800, is essentially being able to eliminate a lot of the distraction and the noise. So how do you put a band filter on? Go to the control tab, enable band filters, and that's what happens. So there's a lot of different symbols that you're going to see in the herd list. You know, the first one you're going to see is like a, a, a star, and that basically confirms they heard you. And when you see a, a phone, which is going to be for about five minutes, a station is calling CQ. The flag is probably, what, to me, one of the most important ones. A station has left you a message, and we'll get a lot into that here in the next slides. Um, but I can simply just right mouse click on, if, there was, if this happened to be a flag right here from Mark and I just right mouse clicked on it, on it, I can go to my inbox and pick up the message. And again, I can show you that later. End of transmission is a diamond symbol. So when you look in, uh, you know, in the message area, comes in, you, it, end of the message is going to be a diamond. If you see dot, 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 and then the diamond, it's basically a, uh, a transmission that was incomplete. Uh, it, did, it didn't decode completely. So pay attention when you're looking at that. I'm not going to go to too much in depth, but I strongly suggest if you want to master a lot of these digital apps, especially JS8, you really know how to set your audio settings correctly so that you can dig these signals uh, out of the weeds and be able to operate at faster speeds. So again, watch that one as well as the propagation tools. Uh, it shows you whether or not, for example, if you're trying to connect for someone in another area part of the country and you're on 40 meters, for example, at a certain time of the day, is 40 meters... 40 meters even workable between you and them at that distance at that time of the day. So again, I break it down, show you how to use all of this stuff. I guarantee you, these are great tools in the toolbox you want to use. Links are in the description below. Now, settings and options, there's basically three parts when you set up JSA call and you want to keep your eye on these. So it's what is known as file under your file settings, which is your main settings, which, you know, again, if you went under file settings, you're going to get general in here, uh, these are the main tabs. These are sub tabs. So under general is station behavior and, and networking and auto reply. So when I'm setting my general one, I, I need to basically go to each one of these and change the settings. Radio has two. Audio, reporting, frequency, saved messages, notifications. So that's where you do a lot of your settings. Uh, there's tabs across the main window. So here's where I went. File settings to pull up this one. But there's configurations. There's mode, log, view, control. Uh, view and control has a lot of key settings you have to set up initially, uh, and pretty much you're done once you do that. But again, be aware that it's just not here is the settings. There are settings in here and here, and there's some features built into the configurations. 
So there's another way to do it. The third part is right mouse click on, uh, on buttons, call signs, whatever. So for example, in the herd list, I right mouse click on, uh, looks like Mark's call sign here. And if I click it on, it's going to give me a list of options. This is when we get into jumping uh, to change the time drift. Um, I can look at, for example, store message. We'll, we'll use that one. A lot is going to come out of this one here, directed to with this uh, arrow pointing out, and it launches a huge number of, of options you can use. Uh, again, uh, just pay attention when you're doing anything and everything. Just right mouse click and see what comes up. But this one you're going to want to be using all the time. And then sometimes, uh, again, here's another example. I could just right mouse click on the speed up in here. And all if I, right, right mouse clicking up in there pulls up how I could change my speed quickly. So again, we talk about file. Remember file settings right in here? Well, that pulled up this screen. Again, this is where you're going to want to take the time and put in the information. If I was changing, uh, if I wanted to add a, um, a group, I can simply put a comma past this one and put in, for example, uh, Amron, PrepperNet. But you would have to put at, the at sign, comma, at sign, Amron, uh, comma, at sign, Aries. So whatever group that you belong to, how, to add, how you add it, it's simply a comma with no space, at sign, and put it in. If you don't want to participate in the all-call group, just uncheck it right there. If you want a copy of my settings, go ahead again. I'll, say, I'll mention this several times. But at uh, if you want the JSA call time setting, say I want the JSA call uh, instructional guide, uh, and just email me at hamradiomadesimple at gmail.com. But make sure you tell me it's the JSA call one. So again, uh, across the top, we can look at here. Another one that's going to pull up is configurations. Uh, and so... With configurations, and I'll break that down here in a, in a few minutes here, but uh, it allows you to be able to have multiple configurations set up. So if I'm using two different radios or I'm working with a group and their settings are completely different, I don't have to change them every time I want to use it. It's a great, great feature. So here's, for example, what you're going to see under configurations. I have multiple ones. Mode, which you're going to see over here, this is the exact same screen that you're going to see when you right mouse click on the speed button I just showed you two slides ago. View. This is an important one. These are the different settings that you're going to work with. And it says show band activity columns. There's an arrow and there's a host of a bunch of stuff in there uh, that you're going to see in here. Show call activity columns. Again, hit that and it goes over. And I made my settings available for you. Control looks like this. And simply on this one, you're going to do top, you know, check the top three. Uh, when I set the frequency, this is custom frequencies. And uh, when I do set offset, this is one that, if I set it at 1800, every time I open up JSA called, no matter where I left off the last time, it's going to always start back at my offset at 1800. Strongly recommend you use it. Uh, so again, just play with these different uh, uh, options in there and see what you want to work with. So again, across the top, we get in a little bit, uh, I call it different setup options that you can do under configurations. You can do it by radio. You can do it by group, which I do, and you can do it by FL rig, and you can do it by something totally else. For me, I do it when I'm just doing testing so I don't mess with my settings and just playing around with the systems and I don't go, oops, how do I get back to normal? Well, I don't have to worry about it because that's my testing setup. And for YouTube, I just use uh, a whole configuration setup for that. So quickly, when you work through this, I just I can select one. What I usually do is I took my ICOM 7300, had it, had it perfect, I cloned it, and then essentially then I... Uh, I switched to it, I renamed it, excuse me, I renamed it, then I switched to it, and then I changed, for example, with doing FL rig, I set the CAT controls and the audio controls differently, and now all my other, you know, view, control settings, everything is the same except the, uh, the radio rig controls. Now I have it so I don't have to switch back and forth. So again, a lot of fun doing this, uh, pretty easy. So if we look at mode across the top here, and this is, uh, again, um, the, the, what you see up in here, this is the one that I had mentioned that is duplicate to the screen uh, earlier showing you uh, on the uh, changing the speeds. Uh, always start, I always have this at normal. I only try to do slow under the worst circumstances because JSA call is so good if you get the time delta down. Uh, I just pretty much work at normal and fast. Um, and you want to make sure what you see in here is uh, enable auto reply is, is checked also, which we did earlier in the settings. So some of this, again, is, is in two places. 
Um, again, as I right mouse click here, you're going to see this between the two. So on the speed button, it's here and under mode, it's the same screen. Multiple places, you'll see some of these settings. Uh, now when I look at, for example, uh, I want to right mouse click. You, one of the areas you're going to spend most of your time right mouse clicking is in your herd or call activity list. So if I right mouse click on, for example, uh, K2 DHS, and now it says directed to KD uh, DHS, uh, a, a plethora of options are going to pop up in here. But I also offer this, I, I do store message. I also use relay a message. And I can, uh, let's see what in here. Sometimes I'll do clear all if I want to get rid of everything because it's built up for too long. But again, right mouse click on a selected call sign. Now by doing the directed, what I see right in here, it's going to pull up all of this. And I'll break this down here in another screen. Uh, but it's going to show you all the options that you have associated with that particular call sign. Just be aware when we're doing time sync, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, JSA call, it's time sync critical. FL Digi is not, VAR HF is not, WinLink is not, this one is. There's a trade-off. In order to get the minus 23 dBs and be able to work it, you have to really work within that time sync settings. And so when we talk about, uh, you know, a time sync, in the normal speed, you're going to see what is known as a transmission window. And this is 15 seconds in normal, 30 in slow, uh, 10 in fast. So between each burst that has to fall within the transmission window. If it starts to creep over, we're starting to run into time delta issues. So here's one that's really bad, that's going to take a lot of work to do, and I'll get into how to do that later on. But the goal is, you know, less than 500 uh, milliseconds for your time delta, and I, my goal now is minus 300, but yours should be start out with, try to keep it within 500 milliseconds. When you have a low SNR, for example, minus, we were just doing this the other night, we were testing, minus 18 we were, and we had our, uh, our um, time delta at around 200. We were able to do turbo on minus 18 and get a full decode. So this, this is why I talk about, not that I would recommend do turbo, but definitely you should be able to do fast even at that if, again, everything is set up correctly. When you're doing, uh, again, uh, looking at these, uh, I call it these, these burst of transmissions in there, um, you want to see where the signal is, okay, where it's falling in there. Uh, but if you see the signal, like in here, and, and it's not decoding, it's one of three issues. It's a time delta issue. Uh, it could be an ALC issue, or it could be your audio setting issue. And I've seen that happen where the sender's audio settings, the sound output is not USB audio codec. It's something else. It still sends a signal out, and, but uh, nobody can get it. Nobody can pick it up. And that's another option. So there's three areas that it could, could be impacted by having a, such a bad signal where you can see it, but it's not falling within the, uh, the transmission window. So again, summary, faster speeds need lower time deltas. So when we talk about computer time set, you know, again, your clock, my clock, how do you set these? Well, I use NetTime app. You may be using Windows, and that's why we're getting the time delta. But you can use something such as an atomic clock, which is manually adjusted. You can use something that is WWV, which is an HF radio station from Fort Collins. That's another way to sync your, uh, um, your rig. You can use a GPS device, which I actually have this. I bought it off of Amazon. But you have to take it outdoors. Don't try to do it indoors. It's not going to pick up the, uh, the satellites. But I put it in my laptop, go outdoors, and it's simply I can sync it to GPS time. Now, GPS time and net time are not necessarily the same time. Again, that's why you get time deltas. So if we look at some of the tools that you ought to look at, if you have an ICOM product, and I'll list the ones here, I like the uh, ST400-3W, uh, and what this allows me to basically do is adjust the time and date of my ICOM 7300 transceiver. It's a nice little tool, and I run that every so often. But I would strongly recommend you download NetTime. You basically uh, load it, set it, and forget it, and this is what it looks like. So let's go over some of the time sync basics that you need to understand. This is the most important part of time sync is this slide. You're, you're syncing to each other's timeline. And so what you're looking at, for example, we're going to start at a normal speed. We're looking where the signal falls in the transmission window. Here, if you see this and I see this, we're synced. If, if, I, if I see this now, it's starting too early, we're going to have a time delta issue. And if I see this, we've got a major correction. This could be adjusted right in here with the jump option. This is going to have to require trying to do time sync tools within it. So 
what you need to understand is that this all has to be done within 15 second increments. So what I'm saying is, is so if my seconds are 0, 1, 2, 3, you've got to be 15, 16, 17, or 30, 31, 32. And it doesn't, it, it could be five, 0, 5 minus, the other one is going to be 0, 20, and uh, uh, 0, 35, or excuse me, so it could be like 0, 5, it could be 20, it could be 35, as long as there's a 15 second in, uh, increment in between, or, or we're matching up our seconds by 15 second window, perfect. Now, when you're doing a group and you're trying to have a bunch of people all be synced, because it's easy to do an individual, but what happens when multiple people want to get together in a, in a group call? Well, you got to have someone be the master, and we all sync off of that same signal. So we become the slaves, and again, as long as we're looking at that 15-second window, our minutes, our seconds outside of the 15-second increment, it, that's the only thing that matters. It, hours don't matter, minutes don't matter, seconds don't really matter, provided that we're in that 15-second window. So if you look up here, for example, uh, again, my clock showing 05, for me to be fully synced, like with someone like right over in here, they've got to be either 05 or uh, 15 seconds added would be 20 seconds or 35 seconds or 50 seconds. If they're showing that, we're good. We should show this. And that's all it needs. So we're not trying to match up clocks exactly. I want to give a shout out to the MCOM group. Uh, I could not have figured this out without you guys. And this is just, you know, small portion, you know, Mark, Brian, Scott, greatly appreciate uh, helping me practice and try to learn, you know, in this part of the, uh, of the presentation. Uh, I've got uh, uh, Drew and Gary who are a big help in the, uh, the demo section in here. So again, thank you guys and all the whole team for Saturday night's practicing. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. We tested this multiple ways, tried to break it and tried to, find out how to fix it, and a lot of the stuff's not even in the manual. So again, thank you guys. If anyone's found a better way or have great tips or tricks, please post it uh, in the comments below, and uh, I'll try to collect those, and if they're really good, I'll do a short off of it. Oh, the one uh, to do, I call fine adjustments within the time delta, use the jump option. And so, for example, if we look at here in the, in the herd list, uh, we have uh, N3RUA. Uh, if I wanted to connect with him, I noticed that we have an issue with the time delta. So the 1100 uh, milliseconds, I would want to correct. So all I have to do is, is right mouse click the call sign. You kind of get a picture here. Right mouse click the call sign. I'm going to go jump to minus 1100 milliseconds. It's going to automatically put in under the timing section in here. My time drift is now going to be changed to a minus 1100, provided I had reset my time drift prior to that. So always make sure when you're going to do a jump or time drift change, reset the time drift back to zero. So let's talk about uh, the different ways you can do a time sync in here. Uh, always, again, reset the time drift first, and then I can use the automatic, which is going to be start at the beginning of the signal as best I can. It's going to go through, for example, uh, two. You can actually change this to three decodes if you want. It's going to average them, and it's going to give you a pretty good result. That's one way of doing it. Uh, you can set the time drift to now at the end of the burst, and that's when you have your uh, your cursor, your your arrow sitting right on this. And as soon as I hear the end of the signal, as soon as I see the end of the signal, all I have to do is click that button, and it's going to lock on. And it's the same thing. I can do it at the start of it the very same way. Either way, you can do it. Uh, I recommend trying to also listen if you don't have a lot of noise. Um, go ahead and just turn up the volume on your rig or do a headset because I find them faster if I hear it either going on or going off and then clicking on the right button accordingly. So let's talk about uh, marking income signals. So we talked about doing it, but how do you actually mark it? Well, essentially, as soon as it starts, as soon as it appears over the horizon up in here and I start to see it, that's when I click. Or if it's coming down, I'm just about ready to click to right now up here to to at the end of the transmission would be right in here. Now, <clears throat> the first one you may let go because you know, hey, it's coming in and I'm going to get ready for the for the start of the second one. That's perfectly. You don't have to get the first one. You can get any of these. If there happen to be three bursts, this is a 45 second signal going out. If I can grab either like this here at the start, here at the end, here at the start, here at the end, as they are coming over and appearing in the waterfall. Either way, it works that you can look at it. So just click that on. Now, let's say I messed up and I was trying to do the first burst that came across at the top. And I go, oh, rats, I don't want to have to do this all, you know, go through another whole cycle of someone sending something. I simply go back, reset the time drift, 
get back into the application at, at this part and try uh, catching an end of uh, one of the, the bursts that are just coming over. Or it could be the start if you did it quick enough in here. Now, uh, with our NCOM group, what we do is for trying to do group sync, we have what is known as a protocol. And what we do is basically take the uh, the word time and we put someone's call sign, the master who's sending it out will put their call sign in. And they're going to do it, you know, uh, three times every minute. And so if you can't get the first one, you know, you can get the second or third one. So, again, if you're doing groups and you're trying to do it, nice technique in being able to sync the entire group together. Now, there's a problem a lot of times trying to do this if the signal's really weak. Now, this is a workable signal, but I've had them where it's basically in this blue in here, like a minus 20, 23, and I couldn't see the signal. It's there, but it's not presenting itself well. Well, when you use the default settings within the display tab right in here, the display tab, what you're going to get is something like this. But if you, you want this result, adjust your settings. Take the gain, push it three clicks to the right, take your zero, three clicks to the left, it's going to take a, like a very, very terrible signal and make it pop out like nothing you've seen before. So this is a great way for me to be able to catch the beginning and the end. Again, just a, a tip that I found. Uh, so if for some reason you've been trying to do the time sync and you're having issues and it's just not really giving you good results and you want to get the optimal result as possible close to zero, well, we figured out uh, uh, how to do this and we came up with a math, math calculation. And, uh, you know, Brian in particular came up with a formula, KK7 FKD from Idaho. Uh, basically what he did is he said, okay, let's take the time delta between you and the sender. So the time delta is, is minus 1799. And we want to take the time drift, which is under the timing tab. It sh it'll show up and it's going to show up at 600. You know, when I clicked on that person's call sign, which happened to be Brian when I was doing this. And so we came up with a formula. New time drift equals old time drift minus time delta. So are you confused yet? What does that mean? Let me walk you through an example. Here's an example. So we know that the old time drift is in here happens to be 600. So here's the time drift, 600 milliseconds. I'm going to subtract the time delta, which is a minus 1799 milliseconds. So minus 199 milliseconds. And it's 79 7799 milliseconds I need to put into my time drift. But some of you are thinking, wait a minute, like I did, uh, how do you get that? Well, I forgot. Two negatives equal a positive. So you take the two negatives, which is the minus a minus, the, 17, the 1799, and it equals basically through addition 7799. So manually enter in 7799 into the time drift, which you see right in here, and I guarantee you're going to get optimal results on doing it. Again, there's multiple ways to do this thing. We found this out to be when, you're having, when you can't do slight adjustments and you're having some severe problems, is use the data that's in front of you through this formula, and it works great. So again, if you want my settings, you want the guide, it's about 17 pages or more, please just you know, request it and just say, hey, I want the JSA call setup guide. Email me, hamradiomadesimple at gmail.com, but make sure you hit the like and the subscribe buttons. I would appreciate it. So let's go over some tips in here that important settings that you need to be aware of in order for these advanced features to work. You need to go under general network auto reply and you want to make sure that you turn auto reply on at startup and you uncheck ask for confirmation before sending an auto, auto reply transmission. Uh, Drew came up with a, a great suggestion. Uh, I get the question. Okay, I don't see anybody in my call sign. Or excuse, I don't see their call sign in my herd list. And they're, they're not there. How do I right mouse click something that's not there? Well, either you, you can leave those people on that you're talking to and just leave them in from the last session. They'll, they'll still be there. But how do you even know if they're on JS8? Well, the best way to do it is, is go ahead and I call it a ping. Put their call sign. So if I was trying to do Drew, for example, at KG7YSX, I put his call sign in with the greater than arrow on your keyboard and just hit enter. And if they're on, it's going to give you an acknowledgement back. So thank you, Drew. Uh, great tip. When we look at the, uh, the rich settings, I call it the feature screens that are offered in the directed settings area. And again, to remind you how to get there, what do you do? Yes, you, you highlight the call sign, right mouse click, and hit the directed to. And now it's going to pull up this screen, which has so many different features and options. So I'll break that down here in, in a second. So let's look at some of these options here. Automatic commands, uh, which you're going to see up here at the top, is basically me sending my information out to you, whereas 
the ones that you see over here is you requesting them for me and it automatically turns my rig on. So think of it as I'm pushing out information, I'm pulling in information. So push-pull is the way to look at it. And these happen automatically. Now there's advanced messaging options that you're going to see in here and we'll get into those, especially in the demo. Uh, there are some macro commands, or I, you know, maybe that's not the right term, but uh, anyhow, these are just like short commands. If you do uh, QSL, question mark, and if I click that on, uh, did you receive my last transmission? It sends it out. But you can also, if you remember these, is just go ahead and type them in the message box, just the same way. Call sign, QSL, question mark, automatically does the same thing. There are six different ways you can send a message through JSA call. The first way is directed message in the message section, call sign space message. Group message is essentially all you're doing is highlighting the group message, go to the message area, type it in, and it'll be sent out to all of the group. No call sign required. Relay messages is trying to send through a uh, intermediary to get a message to a place you cannot reach. So if I was trying to go from Raleigh and I'm trying to go to Idaho and I couldn't reach Drew, I could go through, for example, uh, Mark in Michigan at KA8ONW uh, and I can uh, relay the message to him and the message would then go from him provided that we're all on at the same time the message would go from him up to drew at uh, kg7 ysx now how do i know that mark can reach drew if i just take my mouse and hover over the call sign his call sign in the herd list it's going to pull up like a, a temporary bubble uh, like text screen and it's going to say hearing and list all the call signs of who's hearing him and heard and under the herd side, as long as I see uh, Drew's call sign, uh, KG7YSX, I know I can use Mark as a relay. So it's a great way of doing it when you can't reach somebody, but you're all on at the same time. So all you need to simply do is please relay this message to its destination, and we'll walk through all of that in detail in the demo. So post to another's uh, inbox message, which you're going to see right in here. This is a great one. Uh, and this actually happened during the filming of the recording of the demo on the first part. You're going to see where Todd out of New Jersey uh, basically sent me an inbox message when I was uh, working through JSA, JSA call and showing you the general overview of it. And so you'll see a great example of that. So it's easy to do that. And why would you want to do that? This is typically a scenario, let's say, for example, um, I'm up early and Drew in Idaho is not, or Brian's not up yet over there in Idaho. I can post a message, uh, you know, uh, in their inbox, provided that they just left the system on. And when they get up or they could be in the shower doing whatever, they can come back, they'll see a flag by my call sign and they can go pick up the message. Again, we have to both be on at the same time, but you don't have to be actively engaged in the system. You can do a combo of some of this stuff in here. And this is a, please store this message at your station for a later retrieval. This one I think is really cool. So, uh, and we did this. I, I sent it to Mark in Michigan, uh, posted a message to him. And uh, Gary uh, down in Florida, uh, he got it when Mark connected with Gary at a later on. So this was, Mark was just holding my message in his inbox until the two connected. So when Mark and Gary connected, it automatically went over to Gary. So again, great option when you do have a combo of a relay and posting to someone's uh, inbox. Uh, another one that's out there is, um, and again, this is not in the uh, directed uh, section. This is under, again, right mouse click on the call sign, store message. This is going to store it locally. And so essentially what this does, I have a message stored on my system to be picked up at a later time. So let's just say, uh, for example, uh, Mark was wanted to pick up a message from me and I had it. It's sitting in there. He's not on whatsoever. He was traveling. He's, he's gone. I leave it in there. Next time he gets online and that I'm online, he can basically just go over to my call sign and query, are there any messages for me? And it's going to say yes. And here's the ID number. And this is, this is right in here. This is what he did. Do you have any messages for me? And then after he gets the, uh, the, the confirmation, yes, I do, with the ID number, he's now going to come back and click, please deliver completed message identified by ID. And again, I'm going to walk you through in this in the demo. Gives him the ID number, 16. He puts it in. Uh, it's showing for a spot for this to be filled in. Sends it off and can pull the message uh, out of my inbox. Really cool. So this is where they're going to ask for a request to see if it's available, and then they're going to pick it up when they want. Notifications. This one's really important. Uh, to make this so much easier where you want to leave GSA call on and be able to do something else in the room while you're doing this is this is where you want to turn on notifications. 
And so essentially go under the notifications tab and you, I do the inbox message received and directed message received. Those are really important. And it's simply, uh, I, all I'm going to have to do is select the copy this and, but I have to select a sound that goes with it. Unfortunately with JSA call, when you try to map to sounds, I can't find sounds in my system where they're located at. Maybe somebody else is better at doing that, but I couldn't find it. So I had nothing to map to. So I had to go to Major Geeks, and the link is in the description below. I looked up Windows 11 sound systems. I actually downloaded it, and I knew where the file was. I stored it on my thumb drive, and I created a file called Sound Files, and then I opened it up. And then so essentially I went back once I had all that done. I now could map it. So I went to Select, and I picked up, again, I know through the thumb drive, through the sound file, and here is, under Media, this is the ringtone that I picked. And now... Anytime a directed message comes in, I get a notification that's one sound, an inbox message is another sound. Something great to use. So let's get into the demo section. Uh, and this is part one, the general overview. And again, thanks Todd for dropping that inbox message during the demo. Uh, Todd is KA2YNT from New Jersey. I appreciate it and thank you so much. Let's get started. When you first open JSA Call, the most important thing to check is right up here. You want to make sure your receiving and transmission is enabled. If it's green, you're good. If it's gray, you have to click on the button and turn it on. There's a setting to allow this to always be green, but again, uh, just always check it. Make sure that you're up and running. Over here is where you're going to check your speed. Start out with normal. This is also some other commands you can do, whether it's enable auto reply, your heartbeat, uh, and, uh, enable heartbeat acknowledgments, etc. Um, over here, what you're going to see is my call sign, which should be your call sign, your grid square, your computer clock. Why you get a time delta is my com computer clock is based off of net time, the app I mentioned earlier. If you're just using the Windows time, it, it's going to be different. And that's why you're going to see these time deltas that are in here. Or some people just have bad time set up and you get uh, huge time deltas. Uh, over here is the frequency that I'm going to be using right now. If I click it on, I can actually choose another one, which I will. I'll go back to 7078, which is the main calling frequency here. Uh, and stuff will start to populate. Or I can do set a custom frequency. If I want to do a one-time off, for example, I want just one time 7.110. I type that in. And it's not permanently in the memory, but I can use it. Um, if I go to here, I'm going to go 7078. Or 7078 and now I'm on the main calling frequency. Now the offset is showing right now at 700. That's where uh, the uh, last heartbeat went out at. But I'm going to just move it over to 1800. And I can go over here and just bring it down to exactly 1800 if I wanted to do it. And I can also enable my filter. At this point, when I enable my filter, uh, I'm, I set my filters up at 1200. And so I'm not going to receive anything that's outside of these. I'll probably, I'll get no heartbeats because they're down around seven, 800, typically on the heartbeats. Uh, and this is a way of being able to just limit, if you don't, uh, again, limit who you want to talk to and you don't want to get interrupted with a lot of uh, incoming calls and requests, you know, for signal to noise reports, your, your rig is going on. You don't want that. So as a prepper, this is what you want to do. Enable the filter and choose, for example, uh, let's say 7068, not a main calling frequency. I enabled my band filter. Now I can have a, a great uh, QSOs with people that I know, and I'm not getting a lot of interference going on from other people. So I'm going to just turn that off to show you, though, for many of you who just want to do this for QSOs, you want to turn that off. You want to go back to the main calling frequency, which is 7078, and uh, you're going to want to hit uh, heartbeat. And that's going to all of a sudden throw out, there's my heartbeat coming out, you know, so or someone else's heartbeat. And you'll start to see that down in this area. So I, I'm receiving this person's heartbeat right here. And that's what I'm seeing down over here. So if you see anything below 1,000, those are heartbeats coming in. And here in a second, you'll, this thing will start to populate like crazy. And you'll start to see people that I can actually be connected with. Um, Let's see, let's go into the file settings as this thing is populating. So I'm going to go under file settings. Here are all the tabs that you need to be aware of. Okay, so general, and under general is going to be behavior. Now, these are the two uh, ones that I told you, leave unchecked so that it always enables your RX and TX to be green, and it goes on in the beginning. 
I, I use the remove messages after 999 again because I'm doing this with uh, from a prepper's perspective and I don't want uh, to remove the uh, people I'm talking to after 30 minutes. If you're doing just having fun doing QSOs, put that at 30 minutes because this is going to populate real quickly on these main channels and it can become overwhelming as you can already see what's happening. So behavior, you got station, behavior, networking, auto reply. Uh, again, idle timeout. Uh, if I'm waiting for messages to come in, I leave this on as long as possible. Uh, it doesn't take up much power for the receiving mode. And just to have somebody come in and drop messages for me, I'll leave it at this because, again, I'm doing it in uh, off frequencies and as well as band filters. If we go over to your radio, this is where you're going to get set up. But I typically say first start with the audio. Make sure that you have your USB audio uh, codec set up for both your input and output. If you're getting uh, your, when you transmit and you're hearing it through your radio through your speakers, that's because uh, your speaker settings is probably using your default setting, which might be something like your uh, Realtek speaker audio. So if you hear that, immediately go under the settings to audio and make sure that you have it back at um, USB audio codec. Uh, then I go to my radio, and within the radio, there is cat control and rig options. So again, up here, I put my rig options in, which is the IC7300. I put cat, uh, data packet, fake it, but if I have issues with, uh, sometimes or sometimes I have issues, I will, with split operations, I'll do none. But start with uh, fake it. Go to cat control, make sure you have your baud rate, your comp port is located in here from the drop down, is in here. And then default, 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 and test the cat, test push to talk. Now you, it should engage your rig, you're good to go. You're ready and all set for JSA call. Reporting, uh, again, it's up to you what you want to report. I just basically, uh, if you want the API, just allow setting stations. And I was just practicing with this too. Some, somebody asked me to, to allow them to, to see my station information. So, I'm, again, this is for my YouTube station. A new message was received, okay? This, is, this came in, so I'm getting a notification. And you can actually see it right in here. There's a message. That's perfect. Someone's going to do that. Frequencies is where I change the frequencies. So all I have to do is just right mouse click right in here, hit insert, and type a new one. And so, for example, if I typed in 7.110, and I always want to make sure it's going to show up. It's going to start out as all. But I'm going to change that to JSA call, type in the frequency, hit OK. And now I've just added 7.110. It's permanently in my memory. Notifications you're going to want to turn on. This is for these two. I love directed messages and in inbox. It's going to give me a notification. If I'm away, I'm doing something else. I hear it go off. I need to go back and check for my messages. And again, how to get this connected to the sounds is in the earlier part of the video and in my handout slides in particular. So I'm going to hit OK. So that's pretty much the settings there. Uh, we're going to go along configurations. This is where I've set it up where I have a YouTube setting. I have my MCOM for my MCOM group. We have the, our settings. I have for FL rigged from I'm using my FT891 and for my IC7300. Once I do this, it's, it's basically you know plug and chug. It's done. All the settings I want for each of those is, is completed. How to do it is you take your original setting, which I started with my ICOM7300. I cloned it. Then I, I switched to, renamed it, and then, uh, then adjusted the settings for FL rig without having to do all of these settings up in here and having to adjust them. So mode, you can see this is the same thing that you're going to, mode is the same thing that you're going to see over here. It's the same one. So either one, either way you can set those. View, again, it's in all of my settings. Again, pay attention to these arrows that pull over. And again, uh, you can get those from me. Uh, control, I don't do anything with. Uh, and that's pretty much up there. Right mouse click, if I wanted to uh, take a look for the person who flagged me on here. I can write mouse click and I can, for example, I can uh, do a directed message to, I can, uh, I can ask uh, what is my signal report, what is your station information, what is your current grid location. Think of these as macros. Uh, and again, this is automatically send my, inf uh, send my station information to this person. I can do it automatically and send it off to them. So again, right mouse click on call signs is huge. And if I want to clear everything, I can just right mouse click in any space, clear all. I can remove or deselect a particular person. Let's say 
whoever this one is right in here. I click them on, I right mouse click, I can remove activity and they're gone. Uh, but I, I want to look who did the flag and I'm going to go up and I can actually right mouse click and let's go into show message inbox. This is a, hey MJ, uh, you are plus two. This is Todd here. This is great. So he put a message in my inbox. And if I wanted to, I can just reply to Todd right here. I just d double click. And I can put it in. Thanks for doing this. Doing a video now. So here's a perfect example of someone who's been trying to connect with me, um, showing him. Now, here's the interesting thing. As this message is still going through, see where the cursor is? I can hit comma while it's still going in because it hasn't caught up and hit thanks. Oops. Better get it done. And now watch what happens. This will all go out. So here's a great example of someone knowing who I am out there, connected with me, and put a message into my inbox and able to check it and able to, to reply back to it. So hopefully uh, this is a good start on it and let's get into more detail on some of the other features in this next section. The next demo section, part two, is time sync settings. We'll go a deep dive on that. And again, a shout out to Scott, KG5 VPF for, uh, from Mississippi for getting online and working with me to produce this. So let's get started. In this next section, I'm going to show you how to use TimeSync when your computer clock is different from somebody else's computer clock. If it doesn't fall, the signal within the transmission window in normal speed is 30, uh, 15 seconds here. Uh, if it goes off of it, you're not going to get a decode. And Scott, who is with me tonight, uh, KG5 VPF, kind enough to help me out. He's going to send several signals, which is basically time and his call sign. And we're going to show you that the first time through, because our clocks are purposely offset, you know, dramatically, that it's not going to have a, a, a decode whatsoever, even though you can see the signal. So we're at 7.097. I need to be at 1,200 on my offset. So I can just basically go over here and drag it. And I'm just going to take it and click it. I'm at 11.91. So if I go over to the control panel next to the waterfall here on the right, I can just get that up to 1200 so we're both set at 1200 7.095 I'm gonna hit the tune up here on the top right which is gonna engage my rig and I can adjust for my ALC I'm just pushing it down a little and you can just get maybe one bar across or two and ALC is correct you turn it off turn it off on the tune next I always check to make sure that my receive my microphone is between 50 and 60 which it is if you need to adjust it, you can always use the AF dial on your rig to be able to adjust it. So uh, we should be set. And what I'm going to do is make sure I go to my timing over here and set the time drift. I'm going to reset it so it's everything's clean. Uh, Scott is going to go ahead and send me a, a message right now. and We should not be able to decode it. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to show you that sometimes it's hard to pull the signal out in the waterfall. And I'm going to adjust that through the display setting. I'm going to make sure that the waterfall and my gain goes over a few. Now all of a sudden you see it pop up. This is a way to be able to take signals that you can't see and make them be able to be visible, for especially when you're doing time sync. Now notice the signal cross the green line, which is your... 15 second transmission window. So you're, this actually needs to fit in between the green lines continually. So it did not happen. We got nothing, there's no decode. So now what we're gonna do is ask Scott to send it again. And I'm gonna make sure I go into my timing screen. I'm gonna set set time drift to now at the end of the, of the first burst of transmission. I'm gonna turn the volume up on my rig so I can hear it. And Scott, go ahead and uh, send your transmission. I can hear it coming in. I'm ready to go to hit set time drift to now end.
Now you can see, uh, you could have done it in the first one, but for some reason it did not, when I hit the button, it didn't engage. So I have an opportunity to hit the second one. This is the time I clicked, and what you see in here is just right at the end. So it looks like I got it at, uh, let's see, I'm getting, if I click on here, uh, we got it at uh, minus 200 milliseconds. So it decoded, and this is a great time, and we're at minus 9 dB. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and have Scott resend it again, and we should see what happens now that I sync to his signal. So go ahead and send the message once again, Scott. Now, I don't have to do anything. Don't touch anything. Just let this message come through. You can hear it coming in. And I'll turn down my rig so it's not so noisy. And you can see it's falling perfectly within the lines. He came over here, uh, 500 milliseconds, uh, minus 10 dB. So this is how you time sync. And you can choose if you want at the beginning or at the end. And you can either get the first or the second. You can start here. You can start right in here or at the end. And if you messed up, let's say you're trying to start here in the beginning and you mess up, you have to reset time drift button. Then it gives you the opportunity to try again on the second of uh, uh, trans transmission burst of uh, 15 seconds within the transmission window. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and send a message to, to Scott. So I just have to double click his call sign and uh, I'll put in mine. I'll just do the same message. I'll do time KW three KW hit the enter button on the keyboard. And let's see, uh, Scott will tell me what he's getting me on his end. So, and he'll tell me if it's, uh, right now, it'll send once this next green. If you ever notice that this is kind of, the lines are striking through, when it, your rig engages once it crosses into a transmission window time. That's why it stopped right on it. So I'll just ask Scott, are you getting the signal? Is it in the transmission window? It's in the window, and it's 800 milliseconds difference. And again, we were off by, I don't know, what was it, like a, a, a thousand uh, milliseconds. And now it's perfect. So this is essentially how you would do it. Now, in the case that um, you, you wanted to use the jump feature, you really can't do it when you're doing the time sync. So what we're going to do uh, is show you the jump feature when you just want to call it fine tuning, for example. And, but you can't use the jump feature. So, for example, if I right mouse click here and it says jump to 500 milliseconds time drift, don't do that when you're doing time sync and you're tagging off of a signal. It doesn't work. But what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to, uh, in this next section, I'll let Scott reset his clock. We're both going to be synced, and we'll make sure that the, there's a difference in the time delta. Uh, however, I'll be able to show you how you can use the jump feature. So... Hold on as we get things reset up. In this next section, uh, Scott and myself are going to show you how you can make fine adjustments without having to do a, a full-blown time sync to improve your time delta. So let's say uh, he sends me something, a signal, and his time delta happens to be like, you know, uh, minus 1,500. And I want to get that down to like maybe like, you know, 100 milliseconds around that. There's a way you can do that pretty simply. But you can't use this feature if you're, you're grabbing someone's si signal in a time jump. It won't work. But there is a formula that you can do it with at that point if it's still really bad. Uh, and I'll show you that later. But for right now, let's just show you this is a great tool uh, just working under, I call it, semi-good conditions versus bad conditions on the time. So Scott's going to go ahead and send me uh, a signal. Let's see if I turn up my radio. And I apologize. And that last time you could hear a lot of noise, but I wanted to hear the signal. So if you hear, and so it's on its way. Let's see. So you can hear the signal coming in. And so notice it's starting within the transmission window within the 15 seconds. So he came over. He's uh, 200 milliseconds off. 
Now, if you see this, leave it alone. Uh, you know, 800, leave it alone. If you start to get like 1,200, you know, 1,500, 1,800, and you want to make the adjustment, we'll show you how to do it. So we're going to let his signal go, come through here. And I'll go ahead and double click on. We got a full decode. He's at, uh, this again, age is 15 seconds, minus 9 dB. Offset was real close. He's at 1199 and 200 milliseconds at normal speed. So uh, what I'm going to do here is right mouse click and I'm going to jump to minus 200 uh, on the time drift. So if I do this, you can see my time drift down here now is minus 200. Scott, go ahead and hit, hit uh, the same message, send it again, and let's see how that will change if we can get that down to like 100 or zero. So again, he's going to send it. And again, you would not do this unless it's a really bad time delta on that. But we'll go ahead and see. His signal's coming in. Let's see what we get this time. Now, you, you really can't use the time jump uh, when you have a really bad signal like we did uh, in the last section. That's where you're going to have to do the, the manual time sync and try to grab it. Or there's also other features. You can use the start automatic time drift just before it comes in with two decodes. That works really well. You can do uh, either start at the, uh, you know, uh, grab the signal at the beginning of the signal or at the end of the signal. There's multiple ways to do it. It just seems to me if I can listen to the sound and I try to do it at the end, it, I seem to have uh, better luck. But if you do it early and well enough, you'll actually get to decode the first time around. So let's say he came in right in here. We can look, pull this up in here. We got a full decode. Now notice the time delta, zero. So this is how you improve the time delta when it just needs, I call it some fudging, when it's under two, uh, you know, 2,000 uh, milliseconds, is basically, again, right mouse click, use the time jump uh, feature, and now we got it down to zero. So I'm going to send him one, and Scott can tell me uh, what he receives. So I'm going to double click, pull his call sign up, and say, uh, what is your time delta? And I hit the enter button. And so I'm sending off, and uh, Scott will tell me here what he's getting. He got 300 milliseconds, which is very good. But you understand the principle of what we're trying to do here is basically if you want to adjust, and again, I would never do it at 200 milliseconds. I'm talking more like, you know, one second and greater. So 1,000 to 1,500, 1,800, I would try to get it down to like, you know, 200, 300, or, or zero in this case. Because the reason why you want to do that is when you have a, a, a say if my uh, signal-to-noise ratio was minus 20, minus 23, this is going to ensure a much better, cleaner decode than if it was with the time delta being off. So that's why you want to do this, is to make sure that you get a cleaner decode and it allows you to change your speed. So you can now, for example, I could, we could send the speed at fast uh, because now that our time delta is much better and minus seven would probably work. Uh, Scott, what is your signal to noise ratio for me? He's got me a minus 10. We could probably do fast. Let's go ahead and just try it for a second here. I'm going to send one to him and do it again. I'm just going to again double click. I'm going to ask him uh, SNR question mark and decode. So this is going to go much faster through. It's being sent off to him. And uh, let's see how this works. And again, notice up here when it's transmitting now, it is uh, red and grayed out. Now it's turning green, which is the receive mode is working. So that was really quick getting it off. Scott, did you receive it? Uh, minus 13 on the, on the uh, SNR? Okay. okay, I was minus 10 before because well, I went to the fast mode. I ended up now being at minus 13, but the speed was great and the time delta is still 300 milliseconds. So hopefully what you're, you're picking up for some of this is um, that there is trade-offs. If you go faster, you may lose a little bit on the SNR, and that's why you have to understand what works best for you when you're doing it. 
But the key is if you get the time delta low, it gives you a lot more options and flexibility when trying to send and decode messages and have it much clearer. In part three of the demo, I'm going to show you how to relay messages within JSA Call. And again, thanks to Drew, KG7YSX, and Gary, KS2ZTX, for participating and helping me to be able to demonstrate this next section. Let's get started. In this section, we're going to show you how to relay a message and why would you want to relay a message. In my particular case, uh, I want to reach Drew up in Idaho, KG7YSX, but I can't reach him. However, Gary in Florida, if I just hover over, you can see KG7YSX under heard by. That's what you have to pay attention to, not the hearing, heard by. Now that I know that uh, Gary can get him, what I'm going to simply do is right mouse click on Gary, relay via him, and then I just type in Drew's call sign, which is KG7YSX, and make sure that you put the greater than symbol in there and I can just type in the message, you know, um, meeting tonight on 7.078 uh, offset 1200. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the send button. Now, um, the message should be going out, and we have Gary on the phone. We actually have Drew on the phone here also. Uh, so my, my rig is transmitting right now. And by the way, it's showing you the total time left when you see this over here on the uh, right, if you can see my, my cursor here. So we got one minute left, so that's four 15-second bursts left to go through. And so the bottom line is this is a good indicator to let you know how long your transmission is going to take before you send it as well as what is a countdown to zero. When it pops green like you're seeing right now, it's basically stopping. That's the 15 second transmission window, which you see in here. Transmit stops, transmit stops, and it's gonna do that here, let's see here, two more times in just a second here. It's gonna go, okay, right there, it stops. So that's what that's all about. But if you can notice here, what, what's gonna help us is the fact that we have a really low time delta, as I mentioned through this video over and over again. And I actually corrected it earlier by uh, adjusting my time drift to minus 400. I simply, you don't want to keep doing it. You just really want to do it once. And usually you're going to stay under 400 for most of the, most of the time. You'll vary. But I simply remember I just right mouse, right mouse clicked and then I went to uh, uh, adjust my time drift. So again, I'm not going to have to do it. Now my rig stopped transmitting and you're starting to see over here at around 1400. So, Gary, are you transmitting to Drew right now? Yes, my uh, transmission is starting to go out. Yep. So I got your message. And I'm coming out. Yeah. Okay. So my message went out, successfully received. You can see it out here. And now it's, in, in the, it's being relayed to Drew Nido through Gary in Florida. And while this is going on, I could just again remind you, if this is activity you don't want to see up in here, just right mouse click and remove activity, for example. I'll pull a couple things out just to, to show you. Always use the right mouse click functions. There's so much things that you can do. I think you're starting to get the feel uh, for all the, the, the options that you have when you right mouse click on particular areas over call signs, etc. Now, I think I'm going to show you here if I go to display, and I went to my, under my waterfall, notice I had kicked my gain over. And my, uh, so the gain went about three clicks to the right and the zero went to about two clicks to the left. And again, this is how I'm able to pick up a weak signal. Now I'm picking up Drew's signal over here, but regardless, the relay went from myself down to uh, Gary in Florida, up to Drew in Idaho, and this is now... Drew, are you transmitting? Yes, I am. 20 more seconds. Okay. So now, is this a reply to the message? It is. Okay. So Drew's replying back, and then it's going to go to Gary, and Gary's going to repeat the process to me, and then there's an acknowledgement that goes through this. So we'll just kind of wait this thing out as you're going in here. Typically, when you see something like this on the waterfall screen here in the middle, right line like that, that's usually somebody tuning. If you're not used to seeing that, that little 
dash like that. Uh, up in here, you can also notice that I have a flag, and I'm going to show you in the next section. Uh, this is a message. There's a message available. If I just, you can, again, take your cursor. If you just hover over stuff, it pulls up information. It says message available. And this is telling me, again, who, who is hearing uh, Gary and who is being heard by him. So it looks like he's done, and it looks like now, uh, Gary, I, I take it you're transmitting. Yep, that's me on 1400 offset. Okay. I'm done now. That's what you see right in here. So it was acknowledged that he received it. If you look right in here, acknowledged he received it, and that is Drew's call sign right there. So all the stuff is beginning to populate and fill it in. And now this is much better if the, uh, uh, if, if Drew's uh, SNR with Gary was really low and his time delta was, was, you know, good. So in other words, if he was like, you know, minus five and uh, a time delta of, of, you know, under 300, um, he could have kicked up the speed probably to fast for sure. And it would have been, you know, about a third of the time going through this. In this next section, we're going to show you how to send a message to someone else's inbox. Now you're asking, why would you want to do that? For example, let's say Drew has his uh, JSA call on, his rig is on, we're both on the same frequency, but he's not at his station at the present time. Instead of trying to put a message in all of the stuff that's just going to keep populating and getting lost in it, let's drop it into his inbox. So what we're simply going to do is just right mouse click, directed messages, and then I'm going to go to um, please store this message in your inbox. Simple as that. And what pops up now is his call sign message, and I just have to put the message in, is uh, please get on at 8 o'clock p.m. And I'll just hit enter. So essentially what this is going to do, I'm going to send the message. He's not there. It's going to go to his inbox. Uh, Drew is on the phone with me, uh, just as Gary is also still right now. So... Uh, Drew uh, KG7YSX, um, he's going to go ahead and act like he's coming back later because we don't want you guys waiting four hours. So he's going to pick it up when he gets done, and he's going to walk us through what's going on on his end. So, uh, Drew, are you getting the message? I am receiving the message. And tell me when you see the flag pop up, like you can see over here on Gary's thing, a flag should pop up on his screen. Okay, no flag quite yet, but we're still decoding. Yep. It's coming yep. through loud and clear. We're getting a full decode. And if you notice here, it says uh, sending four seconds, three seconds left. It should be done. All right. Now I've received a, um, I've received a flag next to your call sign. A window has popped up. It says a new message was received. It gives the time. And it appears to be sending an acknowledgement. Did you receive one? Yes. Now, you notice here the acknowledgement came in that he actually uh, opened up the message. So go ahead, hit the reply, and send the message back. All right. So and, I'm right-clicking on your call sign, and I'm going to go to show message inbox. And see the message says, get on at 8 p.m. Now, I've got a reply button in the bottom right corner. And... In my window, I've got your call sign, the initialism G for message, and then it highlights the part where I can reply. So I'm just going to say, I'm here, and hit enter to send. Excellent. Should transmit next frame. And meanwhile, we can look here, uh, minus 9 dB. Uh, again, time delta is critical, minus 100 milliseconds. That's why we can do this. You know, pretty cool. I bet you we could even almost go to fast now at minus 8 dB that you're seeing in here. So, again, this is the type of stuff that's really why it's important to pay attention in your call activity list with these, uh, you know, the signal to noise ratio, the offset, the time delta, the speed. Now, if you can notice here, now I got the same message he did. A new message was received. Now, if I don't hit OK, it's still going to populate in my inbox, but it's not going to send the acknowledgement out until I opened it up later on and read it. And then at that point, an acknowledgement would go out. But I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. 
And now if you can notice over Drew, there's the uh, flag. And what I'm going to do is just basically go ahead, right mouse click, and show message inbox. And there is the message. I'm here. And what Drew did essentially is he clicked that on and hit reply. And I can type a, a message back to him and say, got it. And thanks. And hit enter. And so simply what you can see is you can actually drop a message in someone's inbox, provided that they're on, on the same frequency, but they don't have to be around and it doesn't get caught up in all the minutia of all the, the activity that's happening within JSA call within your session. The other thing you can do is if I right mouse clicked, I could have gone to, um, let's see, store a message. So if I did store a message, I can actually store a message locally. And actually I'll do it for, uh, let me just do this. I'm gonna do it for Gary. So Gary, I'm gonna store a message and, and I'll have him pick it up. Meeting tonight at eight o'clock. Now a good time thing to do is put the, the time and date and I can actually just put in, I'll just put the date in for example. So today, today is 10.06.2023. And, and the reason you put some of this to get stored, the, the person's gonna wanna know when was this message originally sent? There's no way JSA call does that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And I have a message stored. Now all I have to have do is uh, Gary, uh, if you wanna go ahead and um, go ahead and out and reach out to me and let's see if we can you, uh, query the message. Remember how to do that? So this is what he's gonna do. He's gonna right mouse click. He's gonna go to directed to, and he's gonna go query messages. Do you have any messages for me? That's exactly what he's going to do. Gary, are you at that point where you can do that? Yep, yep. I'm doing it now. Okay, so this is this is what he's doing. Do you have any messages for me? And so and I'll have him walk through. And it looks like we got the acknowledgement. Did you, you got the message, right? I did. Gary, did you get it? Uh, I got I got I'm Querying your messages right now. Right. I'm querying your forward messages. Okay. Now, I didn't send I'm anything. Sending that to you. Right. I didn't send anything. Okay. Now he sent. So this is this is perfect. What he's telling me is he's looking to say, okay, I have a message stored on my side. Now, why would you want to do something like this? For example, like I know I need to get a message to somebody, but they're not on at this time. I know they're going to be on in two hours. They get off of work. They're going to be able to you know to check their JSA call. But I won't be, you know, I won't necessarily uh, be available, but I will leave my rig and JSA call uh, on. Now, I'm the one away. So by storing it, it's on, it's on my side. When they turn on JSA call, they're going to do the query. And by doing the query, then they're going to pick it up and they can get the message. So essentially, he's going to see, the, yep, the message ID is 13. So what uh, uh, Gary's going to do, I'll, I'll walk you through what he's doing on his side. Uh, again, uh, you direct it to, he's now going to go to, please deliver the complete message identified by ID. Uh, are you able to get to that and put the message number in, the ID number in? Yep, I'm sending it right now. Okay, so he's sending he, the request. Yep. And it's going to ask for the ID number, and he's put in 13. And now what's going to happen is, you can see him coming in. And I'll tell you when my rig, here it goes in, my rig should engage pretty soon. He's doing the query. And again, this is what you see up in here. This is a uh, CQ call is typically going to be, you know, in green. And he's coming in. One thing I want to show you before I get done, if you go under file settings, under notifications, or excuse me, uh, UI, user interface, these are what the color codes mean up in here. So you can take a look at that when you get a chance. But those are the difference with the color code is. Obviously, CQ message, uh, directed message uh, background, that means it's coming in. So it's as simple as that. So you can see now my rig is engaged. And he's, the message that was in my outbox, and I'm going to do that right now. I can go to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, um, view. Show message inbox. 
This is uh, like the messages that would have been in here. He has picked up and it's taken out. Right in here. KQ4, HQD. Sounds good. I'll be there. Is the reply that came back. So essentially you can see all this has taken place by just, again, right mouse clicking and going to directed messages. And then you have your different options. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll just summarize. If, if I want to put a message on to somebody who's on, we're both on, but they're not available. I, that's when I, I drop it into their inbox. If they're not available, but they're on, I can store one locally on mine. I can walk away and then they can come and pick it up. Uh, they can get that message themselves later. So there's two different ways of doing that. So hopefully this makes sense and you can have fun trying it out. So that should be the end of this demonstration. And uh, thanks for being patient with us. Let's do a quick summary here on JSA Call. This is a high activity digital app. So if you're really getting into digital and you want a lot of keyboard to keyboard, activity contacts, whatever that's out there, this is the go-to. This is really, really busy. Yeah, it's 20 meters in a day even, it's amazing. So if you had to pick one digital app to become a master at, it's this one. Uh, you really are able to work with low SNRs. It's the best on the market. You can pull out minus 20, minus 23 dB and work with them easily. But it's predicated on the fact that you get your time deltas down. And you can use time sync tools uh, in order to do that. And that's important. Get used to doing that. As well as changing your display settings so that you can better see and identify the signal in the waterfall. The really weak ones, I showed you how to adjust that. And it's in my display settings. Excuse me. It's in my, in my handout that if you request it, I'll send it to you. That's in there. And I'll show you how to do it. It really is a great tool. Um, you can remember, you can relay, you can hold locally, you can post to another's inbox. There's so many, there's six different ways to do messaging within this app. And from my opinion now, after using this and everything that's out there, it's the top app and it's the top Prever digital app also. So my next video, I'm going to do a HF digital app comparison to kind of do a summary of all the different things that I've gone over for the digital uh, apps that are out there. Uh, I was going to do one on, on the Palomar off-center fed dipole which I like on my 40 meters, but I have other people that have bought it, they're 80 meters, and the customer service is just unacceptable. They're not getting back to you, so I'm not gonna do one uh, you know, talking about their antenna so that you don't get in the, the hassle of dealing with their customer service department or lack of customer service department. So Palomar, you have some great products, but you really need to step up your game on when it comes to customer service. Uh, I think I'm gonna start to do some short videos, kind of break these out into segments so that you can focus on one at a time. And I'm open to suggestions, anything you see that you want me to cover that I haven't covered, uh, I'm open to looking at it. So I appreciate you bearing with me through this long, comprehensive video, but I believe if you watch this one or two times, you will be a master of JSA call. So this is MJ, KW3KW, with Ham Radio Made Simple, thanking you for hitting the like, the subscribe, and posting those great comments. Out.